Hello viewers, uh, this is Nazir Mahmood once again. Uh, today, uh, when I am talking to you uh, via Gauri channel, uh, today our topic is uh, Citizenship Amendment Act in India and how it is uh, affecting Indian politics, why people are opposing uh, this Amendment Act and the role of opposition parties uh, and their failure in organizing and formulating a joint strategy to fight against the BJP and its uh, CAA, Citizenship Amendment Act. So first of all, I will talk about what Citizenship Amendment Act is and then I will talk about the role of the opposition in India. Citizen Amendmentship Bill was one of the promises that BJP made uh, in its election campaign uh, in 2014. Actually, this bill was directed against, essentially against uh, those people who lived in Assam, northeastern state of India, uh, and who did not have citizenship documents or anything to prove that they were Indian citizens. How this problem started? This problem started mainly, though it existed even before 1971, but in 71 onwards it became very acute. In 1971, when the military action was going on in East Pakistan, there were millions of uh, people, Bengalis, both Hindus and Muslims, who migrated and fled the military action and came to Assam. And of course, India at that time welcomed them. And the expectation was that after the war ended and Bangladesh came into being, these people will go back to Bangladesh. But actually that did not happen and some people went back, but most of the people who did not have anything, who were poor people, who did not have land in Bangladesh, they preferred to stay in Assam. Now, they of course came in conflict with the local people and there was in 1980s also there was a movement against them. So this problem was simmering from that time onwards. Now, BJP, since BJP is a Hindu nationalist party and it wanted to gain support of vast Hindu majority. So they promised two things in their election manifesto. One was the uh, uh, cancellation of special status to Kashmir. And second was Citizenship Amendment Act so that the Muslims who don't have documents, they can be either expelled back to Bangladesh or they are forced to live in detention camps. So this is the background. So now what BJP did? BJP started a national registry and all Indian citizens are supposed to get registered after showing documents. Now in India there was no ID card just like in Pakistan. In Pakistan during 1970s, Prime Minister Zulfakar Ali Bhutto introduced ID card. India had either ration card or school documents or passports or some other documents but they did not have ID card as such. So, many many people, majority of them don't have proper identification papers. So, BJP said, established, started this national registry and said all the people should, starting from Assam, get registered after showing their documents. Now, uh, Assam's population is over 30 million, or I think 32 or 33 million. Out of that, 10 or 11 million people are, they say, Muslims, uh, almost the similar number people from other countries, especially from Bangladesh, some from Burma also. So they uh, asked through national registry that all these people should get registered. Now the expectation was what BJP expected. BJP expected that most of the Muslim will not be able to show the document. So they will be either expelled or thrown into detention camp. But when the process was completed after spending billions of rupees, it turned out that around 20 million people did not have citizenship documents, they could not prove, and almost 1.2 million people were Hindus who did not have documents. Now, this was a dilemma for BJP. They could not ex expel more than a million Hindus out of India. So, to counter that and to accommodate Hindus but to expel Muslims, they said that, okay, we are introducing a bill thanks to which 
people who are persecuted in Muslim countries, and of course they, they are mostly non-Muslims, they will be given the citizenship, but Muslims will not get that citizenship. That triggered a backlash, people started protesting, and the bill was passed, first in Lok Sabha, then Rajya Sabha, thanks to BJP's uh, majority that BJP got in the previous election in 2019. Though the elections were contentious, many people said that, you know, those elections were not totally fair and free, but still BJP got the majority and they passed the bill. Now, the good part was that not only Muslims, but even Hindus came out on the streets and protested against this. This was a good part. And most of the opposition parties, Congress and other parties, I will talk about that, which are these parties and why they could not unite. All these parties started protesting. Now, the latest situation was last week, that is, I think, 13th uh, January 2020, Indian National Congress called a meeting and invited uh, major uh, opposition parties to join hands and formulate a joint strategy to fight against the BJP, especially on CAA, Citizenship Amendment Act. Now, these, which were these parties? Bahujan Samaj Party, uh, Shiv Sena, Trinamul Congress, Aam Admi Party, they did not participate in that meeting. Why? First, let's talk about Bahujan Samaj Party. Bahujan Samaj Party was established in 19... 84 by Kashiram and uh, Kashiram at that time had claimed that you know India the people downtrodden people in India were divided into more than 6,000 castes and they need to be united so uh, initially Kashiram and his Bahujan Samaj party got uh, popular support and he had a, uh, an assistant or deputy Mayavati uh, who became uh, BSP's Bahujan Samaj Party's leader uh, even during uh, Kashiram's time. Kashiram died in 2006, but before three years before that, he appointed uh, Mayavati as the leader of Bahujan Samaj Party. And Mayavati uh, is a major leader. Uh, even now, BSP Bahujan Samaj Party commands around 20% votes in the UP uh, uh, popular vote in the previous election they, they, they received. So, and, and uh, Mayavati has also been four time uh, chief ministers of uh, UP. UP is Uttar Pradesh. Previously, it was called United Provinces. Uh, now, it is Uttar Pradesh. So, four time, uh, first time uh, Mayavati became Chief Minister in 1995, I think just for three months, then in 97 for six months or so. But from 2000 onwards, she was uh, Chief Minister, Chief Minister for full five years. So, now this time, why uh, she boycotted? She boycotted by saying that in Rajasthan, where now there is Congress government uh, and uh, BSP was supporting it previously also, so she blamed and she accused Congress party of persuading two uh, members of Rajasthan Assembly to defect towards um, Congress side. So that was the bone of contention and uh, Mayavati refused to participate in Congress, invited Congress. Then the second was Mamta Energy. Now who is this Mamta Energy? Mamta Banerjee came to the fore in 1980s, in 1984, just like uh, BSP came also to the fore in 1980s. And at that time, uh, she was a young lady, uh, Mamta Banerjee, she defeated uh, Somnath Ch Chatterjee from a constituency which was traditionally communist con constituency. Somnath Chatterjee later on became the uh, speaker of Lok Sabha also. So he, at that time, 84, she for the first time became uh, MP. From then onwards, uh, for some time she remained with Congress, but then she established her own party called Trinamul Congress. And she has been Chief Minister multiple times. This Now also she is the leader and she was the one who initiated major demonstrations against the BJP and CAA. And uh, so she, naturally she thought that Mamta Banerjee herself should be the leader of this movement against BJP. So she did not want to uh, accept the leadership, so to say by Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi in Congress. So she also refused to participate. Third, we come to Shiv Sena. Shiv Sena was established in 1966 by somebody called Bal Thakure, who was a cartoonist at that time. And Shiv Sena's essential agenda, it is a Maharashtra based party. And uh, Shiv Sena demanded and still demands that in Maharashtra, uh, preference should be given to the local people. Uh, that means most of the jobs and uh, both in public and private sector uh, should be given to Marathas first and then to migrants. 
so this is like you know if you compare this with uh, in pakistan in sindh also this is the issue between the local people and the people who migrate so there is a constant uh, tussle um, uh, most of the sindhis want that they should be given jobs and most of the urdu speaking mahajis claim that they don't get the job so situation is like i am giving this example just to make it clear that in maharashtra also the same situation happened that so shiv sana became uh, a party of local uh, maharashtra nationalism and pre- presently uh, the the youngest son of uh, bal thakre bal thakre died so his son uddhav thakre is the leader of shiv sana and he is also chief minister of uh, maharashtra and he um, uh, just recently became a couple of months back he became chief minister and he formed a coalition government with the congress this very interesting and now congress has 10 ministries in maharashtra assembly including ministry of education and minister of education is varsha gaikwad uh, who recently you know imposed a ban on uh, schools in maharashtra that no discussion or lecture should be given to students on ca so um, shiv sena also you know for citizen am- amendment bill uh, shiv sena initially supported the bill voted for it in lok sabha but in Ra- rajya sabha uh, shiv sena abstained they did not vote for it then the fourth is aam um, aadmi party that is the delhi based party led by kejriwal and he also gave an excuse that you know i was not properly invited so he did not participate so these four major parties they did not participate in the congress invited meeting and because of that the opposition could not formulate a joint strategy to fight against ca and against the bjp that is the major reason now what will happen what is next the next is if these parties uh, trinamool congress led by mamta benerji shiv sena led by udhav thakre aam aadmi party led by um, kejriwal and bsp bahujan samaj party led by uh, mayawati if these four parties join hands with the indian national congress and they form a wider coalition to fight against congress they can force the withdrawal or repeal of citizenship amendment act if the opposition parties keep this rift amongst themselves they will not be able to form a joint platform and in all likelihood uh, as bjp is expecting bjp uh, cancelled the abrogated the special status of kashmir and there was no major protest in india uh, b- both nationally and internationally apart from some mild condemnations so bjp was expecting that this time also there will be no reaction but the reaction was severe and this momentum should be kept and to keep that momentum of opposition all opposition parties should unite if they are unable to do it i don't think that uh, protests will uh, bear any fruit and there is a possibility that after some time uh, the protest may fizzle out and the bjp will continue as it is which will not be a good option so thank you very much for your attention once again i am nazir mahmood and i am talking to you via gori uh, channel and i once again request you to subscribe to gori channel thank you very much